Unit 4, Lesson 2, we're talking about public opinion. Public opinion today. Public opinion is the distribution of a population's beliefs about a certain issue, about government, about a certain candidate. Wait, sir. So the distribution. I'm missing the first. You're missing the first. The distribution of a population's belief. Population. Go and write that down there. Anybody else missing the first page? I am. So, public opinion tells us how a population feels about a certain issue, about a certain topic, a certain candidate. So, for example, if 80% of the United States answered A, that would be public opinion. 20% answered D, that is public opinion. The distribution of a population's belief. How um, the opinions are distributed. Why do we measure public opinion? What's important about it? it Why does it matter it what people policy. believe? It should inform policy. Public opinion, because we're a democracy, what people believe, public opinion should inform the decisions that the government makes, the policies that government makes. Especially in which branches of government? Legislature. Legislative branch, public opinion is very important because congressmen, they rely on who to vote for them. Constituents. They rely on the people, the constituents to vote for them. The President of the United States rely on people to vote for him also. Which one is it not really effective on? Sure. The judicial branch are all mostly immune from public opinion. But public opinion should drive and should guide the people in government when they're making decisions. If they see that 80% of the United States want gun control, that should be something they take into consideration when they're making decisions. Because we are a democracy. So, why do we measure it? People in government want to make decisions on behalf of the public. Or they should want to make decisions on behalf of the public. And public opinion can tell them what the public thinks about a certain issue, about a certain policy. Public, public opinion can guide policy making. Public opinion can guide policy making. And it usually happens that the legislative branch and the executive branch, they take public opinion into account a lot of the times. Who's relatively, in a democracy such as the United States, public opinion can inform policy debates. Policy debates. Right now, whenever congressmen are arguing whether or not to pass a bill or to fail a bill, what's probably a good idea to bring up? Public opinion. public opinion. Like if my bill has a tremendous amount of support from the public, that's probably a good idea to bring up and on the Senate floor or on the House floor to convince your other congressmen, your fellow congressmen, to vote with you. What's the answer to this one? Uh, the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court or the federal courts. The federal courts are designed to be relatively immune from public opinion. State courts. There's some elections, right? Sorry? In state courts, there are some elections, right? Yes, like ours, I think, is yeah. the elected. So elections also get affected by public opinion. Public opinion can affect the outcome of elections. And they're very beneficial to candidates. Candidates always look at public opinion. They always look at polls. What's the number one way we can measure public opinion? Polling. Polling. So you can look at what people think about certain, some, um, certain issues, certain topics through polling. And that's very useful for candidates. So candidates, they help candidates run a better campaign. And they get this information from interest groups, right? Interest Not groups do the sometimes, sometimes there's actual polling companies that actually do this, and then you pay them for the service. <coughs> sometimes the media do this themselves. Usually it's the media. All right, politicians want to um, get what? Re-elected. Re -elected. Politicians want to get re-elected. Almost to a fault. In the United States today, a lot of our congressmen, their main goal is not to represent their people, it's to get reelected the next year. Almost to a fault. So it might be a good idea to know what their what, what does C stands for? What their constituents think about certain issues. They may um, adapt their point of views, they adapt their policy views according to those policy opinions, according to those polls. Public opinion can help focus a candidate's campaign on issues that are important to the voters. Polls can tell candidates which issues their constituency have place more importance on. Like for example, let's say I was Vicente Gonzalez. I'm the representative for District 15. I'm trying to get reelected yesterday. I was trying to get reelected. Let's say 
polls show that the people of the Rio Grande Valley really, really care about immigration. They don't really care much about gay marriage. So how do I focus my campaign? You talk about immigration a lot. Whenever I appear on TV, whenever I go on debates, whenever I have advertising, I talk about what? I focus on what? Immigration. Immigration, because that's what is, what's important to you. Do I talk about a lot about gay marriage? That's going to be a waste of time. That's going to be a waste of money because people don't care about it in this particular district. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it saves a lot of time. It saves a lot of money for, for um, candidates. Politicians may want to know what the public thinks of themselves and their opponents. What do voters find attractive about the candidate? What do they find off-putting about the candidate? Do, do the voters think that he's trustworthy? Do the voters think that he doesn't dress well? Stuff like that is very important for a campaign. Like Beto's handsome, but he still lost. Yes. And not only that, it gives you information about your opponents. What do the voters like about your opponents? Whatever they like about your opponents, you try to pinpoint that and try to expose something and dig up dirt on that particular thing that they like about your opponents. This one is important, especially for presidential elections. Public opinion can inform candidates of which areas or groups they need to appeal to. And this is important. This is why political candidates spend huge amounts of money just on polling. Uh, most, cam most campaigns, they hire one guy to be their pollster, and this is what he does. Why is it important to do so? So let's say you're 2016. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump facing off against each other. In California, according to the recent polls, 80% of Californians support Hillary Clinton. How does that help Hillary Clinton? California this is the most popular state. Has, has a lot of support for Hillary Clinton. How should that affect Hillary Clinton's campaign? So you're Hillary Clinton's campaign strategist, right? Your campaign strategist, the poll we, says we that she has an overwhelming amount of support in California. in California. So you don't spend time there. Because you already what? You already, you already, already won. You're going to get California. And also, so forget Trump, it. You don't go to California. Don't visit. Don't pay for advertising. Don't care about it. Move to other, go pay attention to states that you can actually win or that actually can flip. If you're Donald Trump, also you're going to ignore it. Why? Because you're down too far. Because you've lost. It's too late. It's too bad. Move on to a state that you can actually win. Like Iowa. Does that make sense? Yeah. Not only areas, but groups of people as well. If Hillary Clinton has a tremendous amount of support for the African -American, from the African American community, then don't pay attention to the blacks. Move on to the other races. <laughs> pay attention to the Asians. <laughs> oh my so public opinion can inform candidates of which areas or groups they need to appeal more, more to, and which groups or areas have they already what? Won over or lost? What does this save them? Time, time and funds. funds. Time and funds are saved. And again, all of this goes into the campaign strategist calculations whenever they're trying to run a campaign. Where am I weak at? Where can I improve? Which one is hopeless? Which one are we already winning? Who reports public opinion data for people and politicians to see you? Who reports it? The media does. Yesterday, almost incessantly. The media. What does that mean? Too much. Over and over. over and over again. All right. So now that we know that it's important to measure public opinion, we need to know how to measure it. So we talked about polls. So here's the official description of, of polls for AP government. Asking a randomly selected sample of people to respond or provide an opinion about a certain issue or about a certain candidate. So if you want like an accurate representation of the United States, you'd have to pick the same amount of people that are white and black. Yes, exactly. We'll talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So again, opinion polls or mass surveys asking a randomly selective sample of people to respond or provide their opinion about a certain issue, about a certain candidate. Like this one right here. That would be an opinion poll. If we ask 500 people, we can calculate that data. That would be an opinion poll. And those people will represent the entire population. There's different kinds of polls. There's special kinds of polls. The benchmark poll, how do you get asked to be in a poll? It's usually random. Um, if you're random. part of the population that you're trying to measure, then you have a chance of getting chosen. But you'll see in a little bit. 
All right, so there's different types of polls. Those of you that are in stats, a lot of these are going to sound familiar to you. First one is the benchmark poll. When we're establishing a benchmark, what are we establishing? A baseline. A baseline. We're establishing a baseline. So when a candidate starts his campaign, he usually does a benchmark poll. So right now, when I started, I want to know what people think about me right now. Thank you for trust. Why would why would that be why would that be important? Why would that be useful? Yeah. Things so things that you can know how what if you've improved or how, you if you've improved, how effective was your campaign? It makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, if if it's about a po policy, let's say Obama after Obamacare was passed, he should probably do a benchmark poll about Obamacare so he can later, see he can what happened over time as Obamacare is being implemented. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Anyone confused by that? Yeah. So you're establishing a what? Baseline. You're establishing a baseline. What do people think about you now? What do people think about a policy now so that you can compare later results to it later on? Is anyone confused by that? Before the... All right, so an initial poll conducted before the start of a campaign about a candidate or an issue, the results will be compared to what? Later. Later polls. So we can see if we improve, if the campaign strategy is effective, if it's not effective, maybe we should tweak it a little bit. All right, to evaluate the effectiveness of a campaign strategy or poll. Tracking polls are polls that are ongoing. We do them at certain periods of time. What's useful about that? So you change over time. We can see changes over time. So when they graph a tracking pole, what's usually on the x-axis? Uh, time. 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 Years, maybe months would be on the x-axis. Like percentage satisfaction or something. Exactly. No, so we can figure out on how line. things Let's change see. over time. What would you call this first pole right here? <coughs> baseline. That would be your baseline pole, right? And the tracking pole means that we're Tracking, and it's an ongoing poll over time, so we can see how it changes over time. What's what's useful about that? What was it? Why is it useful to know how point things change trends. over time? Point out trends. So you can point out trends. If things are increasing or things are decreasing, a tracking poll can can um, can indicate that. So right now, there's tracking polls about whose poll, uh, whose um, approval true. rating. About Obama's gone. Right? Uh, approval Donald rating. Trump. Donald Trump, right? And they started that probably when he became what? President. He became president. So we can track how his approval ratings improve or not improve. He's never had above 50, right? No, I think he's like in the 30s right now. Yeah. I, just I, thought, it was 45. I thought it was 45 yesterday. Oh, was it? I think it was 45 yesterday. It might be because the economy is all right. Mm -hmm. All right. So tracking polls. Ongoing series of surveys that follow change in public opinion over time. This can help point out trends if something is increasing or something is decreasing. That's, that's, does the tracking poll make sense to people? Yes. All right. Next are entrance and exit polls. This is what CNN, MSNBC, Fox News were doing yesterday. I don't know about that last one. It's easy to know what this is. It's in the word. Where, when are these polls taken? When you enter the voting. Where are they taken? At First the of polls. Of all, at the polls. When? When you enter and when they exit. And when they exit. Before um, you vote or after you vote. These are two different things. So a media a news outlet can choose to have an en en entrance poll or an exit poll. Usually it's an exit poll uh -huh. because they're done with it. So. After you vote, there's going to be a media crew hanging around and they would ask random people who they voted for. What's useful about that? You can use it to predict election results. You can use it to predict who's going to win. When CNN yesterday said that Ted Cruz was going to win, what did they base that data on? Exit polls. Or the exit polls. And votes they received. Make sense? Yes. Because they can't go to the voting booth with you and look at what you voted for. That's not legal. You could lie to them. You could lie to them. Exit polls, they could be lying, but they usually don't lie. No. So polls conducted voter, uh, of voters right before and right after they vote. Right before and right after, these polls will help predict the winner of an election. So when we get to 2020 and when CNN calls Texas for the Republican candidate, you should know that that data was based on the exit polls. 
that we're taking. Did they ask everybody? No. no. They did not ask everybody because that would be too expensive and that would be too um, arduous. Yes. All right. Next, another type of survey that people can do is a focus group. Companies do these a lot. So let's say they want to know the opinions about a certain group, about, of a population, about a certain issue, about a certain candidate. They get about 10 to 20. And this is not like a regular poll where you just answer a question or you check a check you box. Yeah. You have an actual discussion between these 10 to 20 people. I think CNN does that a lot. The CNN does this a lot. I'm going to show you one example of it. Is it the West Virginia one? No, I think this was a long time. This is about Trump. No. Trump, of course. I like him. Where's my Beto O'Rourke one? Where's one for you? Look at that cutie. Are you talking about my girl again? You? I'll say with you. <laughs> you don't find some of it coarse or insulting or any of the other things he's accused of? I know sometimes you kind of cringe when he says, you know, get those SOBs off the field. Mm -hmm. That's not anything we don't hear all the time from our neighbors. And the fact that he speaks like everyday people, too, um, has some weight. He's not perfect, far from perfect, you know, perfect. So I don't expect on that. No, I don't think everything he says is going to come off totally perfect. Um, but I think he's saying what a lot of us are thinking. How many of you think that the president's tone has affected the national tone? It's not only that, it's other things that he said and the way he says it, it's, it's very offensive. Such as? When he discussed about the Mexican community and how he referred to them. I've read this. And that's, and we're right. that's an issue. You cannot just do things like that. And so why do you overlook that to give it to vote for him and to give him that a B now a year in? I get, I'm going to be because I'm hoping that he learns a little bit more. He changes his tone. He changes his tone a little bit. Give respect. a little more respect to people. That's yeah. all I want. I just want to hear Mark's response. He is respectful. You have to understand. Not respectful to me. In my community. And that's okay. okay. I, I think he, he's doing his best. All right. These six people are supposed to represent whose opinions? The Trump voters. Trump voters. Trump voters. Trump. People that voted for Trump. I like how they're only description of them as Trump voter. <laughs> yeah. Just like yeah, Trump voter. Anybody else know besides politics? What do they usually do? Focus groups on like food samples for um, businesses for marketing. Yeah. Those of you are going to be marketing majors, you're like, going to do like a lot they'll of. They'll show them a commercial and they'll say, "Is this exactly? Commercial? Is this a good, this good commercial? Good. Were you more likely to buy?" Like if they're introducing a new kid cereal, they would probably bring in who? Kids or maybe moms to talk about the certain thing. Like that chef, do you like, like, do you like the mascot? Kids. Do you like the flavor? What would you improve about it? They go kidnap any kids for their focus groups. Alright, so a small representative sample, usually 10 to 20 people, of people or voters who are brought together to discuss how they feel about a certain issue or a certain candidate. This will help indicate how the group this will indicate how the group the sample represents feel about an issue or a candidate. I think this is my least favorite type of poll, probably. Because it's the least scientific, maybe? Yes, it's the least, it's the least effective, too. All right, today, we're going to talk about scientific polling. And those of you that are in stats should know a lot of these things that we're going to talk about today. Anybody here in stats? No. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. oh, Victoria is. Victoria is. All right, so scientists, not all polls are the same. Not all polls are the same. Be careful with the data that you look at to prove your point, because not all polls are actually reliable. There are methods and procedures that make some polls more credible than others. If you're gonna look at an online poll, that's probably trash in the eyes of the scientific community. It's not reliable, because there are methods that you need to have, there are certain procedures you need to have in order to create a more scientific, more credible poll. Not all polls are the same. But we're gonna talk about the basics right now. Some couple of vocabulary words. The population you're trying to measure is called a universe. So let's say I want to know what women in the United States think about abortion. Who is my universe? Who is my population? Women. All women in the United States. All 150 million women living in the United States. Does that make sense? Uh -huh. That is my universe. Mm -hmm. What's my problem? Immediately. You have to pick from such a large space. Right? Can I ask all of them? No. 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 It's impossible to ask all of them. It's going to cost a lot of money, and it's practically impossible to do so. There's not enough time in the world to do so. So what do I have to do instead? You you have to pick a group. I need to have a sample. I need to pick some of them. I can't do all of them, so I need to pick some of them to ask the question. 
we call that a what? Sample. We call that a sample. The entire population is the universe. The portion of the population that's actually asked is what we call a sample. Everybody good? Yes. So far. Okay. And believe it or not, the results that happen, if you do it correctly, if you were just correctly, is pretty close to the actual beliefs of the population if you do the polling correctly. Um, well, how do we know the actual belief is on a percentage if we can't do it? I'm sorry? How would you know? Yeah, how would you know the exact? Other polls will back it up. Okay. It's like an experiment if you run it multiple times, you get the same result. Exactly. Right. Did we fill this out already? Yes. Uh, the sample is the portion of the universe that is actually going to be asked. So we're not going to ask everybody, we're going to ask a portion. If you're polling for politics, it matters where you pull the people from. Exactly. So sampling error or margin error is something very important in this class. Sampling error is a concept that you need to know about because it's important. Whenever you look at a poll, before you look at the results, look at the sampling error first because the results may not matter. Sampling error means the degree of confidence the poll has. How close the poll results are to the actual number of the, of the population. Like when they flash a poll and see that they have a plus minus in the corner. Exactly. Usually, it's written a percentage, like 5%, 10%, 3%, 2%. So I'll show you what it means. Let's say in 2012, this is the result of a poll in Texas. 45% of American, oh, Texans support Hillary Clinton, and 55% support Donald Trump in Texas. The poll says it has a 5% sampling error. So what does that mean? Donald Trump's support could be as low as 50 or as high as 60. It's plus or minus 5 for, that, for those two numbers. He's exactly right. So where is the real number for Hillary Clinton? Where does it lie? Between 40 and 50. Between 40 and 50. You, might, you subtract 5 and then you add 5. So the real number for the entire population of Texas is actually between 40% to 50%. Mm -hmm. Make sense so far? Yes. And the real number for Donald Trump is between where? 50 and 60. 50% to 60%. Would have any questions? All right. So what do you want your sampling error to be? Do you want it to be large or do you want it to be small? Small. The smaller it is, the more confidence, the more accurate that poll will Usually be. the more people you the sample, entire population. the lower it is, right? Everybody good? Yes. All right. Because think about it this way. If I told you... Um, if you ask me what's your grade for the second six weeks and I told you it's 70 plus or minus 40, what did I tell you? Nothing. I told you nothing. Yeah. It doesn't give you information at all. Alright. Um, I was going to say something. Else. Oh, okay. Let's say the results are different. So let's say Hillary Clinton got 48% and Donald Trump got 52% and we have a 5% sampling error. Give me the real number for Hillary. 43. 43 plus, oh, oh. 52. 52. Right? 53. Sorry. Alright, next? 47. 47 to? 57. Well, can you tell me what's going to happen? No. Can you tell me what's going to happen? No. Because Trump might win or Hillary might win. Because the results are within the margin of error. error. We can't predict who's going to win. That's how they right? decide if election is close or not, right? Exactly. We can't predict who's going to win because it's within the sampling error. Because mm -hmm. Hillary can have 53 and Donald Trump can have 47. We don't know. That's right? Like. So even though the results look like Donald Trump is winning, Hillary might still win, might still pull it out. Last year, in, almost every, I mean, in 2016, in almost every single poll, who was ahead? Hillary, Hillary Clinton. And what people didn't know, that's why they were so bad, so, so dis dismayed and shocked about the election is because of the sampling error. There was a chance that Donald Trump can pull through in every single one of those polls. Same thing with the Democrats in Texas this year, um, when Beto, even though he was still behind, when he got within the sampling error, it was such a big victory for the Democrats because they have a chance. They have a fighting chance because it's within the sampling error. So, sampling error is the degree of accuracy of a poll. It helps us understand how close the poll is to the actual population. Everyone good? All right, this is going to be probably, definitely, going to be in your AP exam. 
I saw oh, this on an we're FRQ. Not gonna, we're not going to watch the video? This one right here. Oh, there's a video. So the Emerson dot edu. You slash news. I don't even know what this is. It could be porn. Alright. Oh. 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 <laughs> what the heck? Oh, yeah. West Virginia is so interesting. They elected a Democrat. So on the Texas polls, before, right before the election, if you look at 50% for Ted Cruz and 47% for Beto, but the sampling error is 3.7%. Um, so it's still within the sampling error. It ended up being really worse. Did it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, anyway. All right. Okay. Keys Watch to an accurate poll site. If you don't have these, your poll might be broken. It might be useless. You need to have these methods in order to have a good, accurate, and scientific poll. You need to know these criteria. Number one, the people that you chose have to be representative of the entire population. They have to be representative of the entire population. All right? So let's say we want to know how many people in the United States like strawberry versus bananas, right? Mm -hmm. and, there is, and the people that we chose are like this, 12 females and four males. Is that representative oh, of the American no. population? Why? Because Why not? It's not even. There should be six because it's not six. even. So there should be six women and six, six males. males. Make sense? Yeah. This is not representative of the entire population. If I wanted to know um, yeah, what, what African American two? think about affirmative action, right? If Matthew was included in my poll, that would be okay. That would not be okay <laughs> because it's not representative of the population I'm trying to measure. Yeah. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Matthew, you can sneak in there. So, a polar has to make sure the identity of the person chosen, for example, are representative of the population they're trying to measure. They have to be representative. The second one's the most important one, so I need you to put a star on number two. If without this, you got nothing. You can get away with some discrepancies on representation. You cannot get away with the second one. If you don't do the second one, you've got nothing. You need to choose the sample. You need to choose the people that you're going to ask in what manner? Random. In a random manner. If you don't choose them randomly, then you don't have anything. Your poll is useless. Well, Whatever trying... information gets produced doesn't mean anything. It doesn't reflect the entire population. So let's say I'm trying to measure how many of you in this class like blue over green. And you pick everyone that's right. Who is my pot? Who's my universe? Us. Everybody Us. in this class. But I'm too lazy to ask all of you, so I'm going to choose five people. That's called a what? Sample. sample. That's my sample. I'm going to choose five people. What if I only chose people with glasses? Is that a random no, sample? Really. No. That's not a random sample. Why? Be because did Leslie and Matthew have the same chance of getting chosen for the poll? No. No, they didn't. <laughs> she had no chance. Had no chance he had a chance. Um, what if I only chose all Hispanics? That's not random. Would that be random? No. No, because Zayn did not have the same chance as Shakira over there in the back. Everybody, everybody in the population should have an equal chance of getting chosen for the sample for it to be random. So give me a way that we can do that. Put your hand in the bag. How can I pick? People, five people randomly. Like he said, I can put your names six. in a hat and six. I can draw five. Don't or I can put six. No, don't bring back the sticks. <laughs> you can hang flyers. Sorry? You can hang flyers for the poll. So, the poll. so right. what pollsters usually do when they do this is they assign a number to people and then they have a random number generator and they choose those people. It's random. Um, what great. pollsters usually do when polling became a thing in the United States is they would have a computer, you can do this in your calculators now, and produce to produce a random number. What do they do with that number? That's the one that they pick. So I'm a pollster, mm -hmm. back in the 90s, you assign numbers to 2000. Right? I produced a random number, not a single digit. Oh, you have to uh, guess which one, <coughs> like how close? What? How many digits? Yeah, what? Do you divide the number? 10 digits. Ten. Ten yeah, ten-digit number. number. <laughs> a random ten-digit number is produced. What do they do with that number? Uh, is it the most inexpensive way to do a poll? It's going to be very expensive if we get people to come to a building and we ask them questions. Down, 
can send a mail or we can just do what? Call them. We can call. Oh, it's a phone number? So we produce oh, a random phone number so using cool. a random oh. number generator from a computer and we say, call it's those security people. number. Sorry? I was going to say, it's just no, like, so that's usually how polls do it nowadays, but it has become more of a problem. Why? Because everyone's phone numbers are the same. Because they do this through landline, um, usually. And how many of you still have landline? Me. Not a lot of people still have landline. So this, this has become less and less accurate. It's not, it's not random anymore because less and less people are having, have landlines. So almost everyone in the population being measured has a, what? Equal chance of being selected for the sample. So you don't why, have that, you got nothing. That's why pulsers never hit my line. Oh, you can do this. Is they do this a lot in stats. So let's say you want to know how many Walmart shoppers are like a, um, the Walmart brand over the generic brand. Yes, if you didn't finish, you can. Yes. Question. Ah. I'm a brute. Good idea. Yes. I was on the door in his face. All right. So, Walmart shoppers. I want to measure something. What can I do to make that random? Go to different WalMarts. I obviously I can go to one Walmart, right? And what can I do? How can I make it random? You pick people who walk through the door. Different times of the day. You pick people who walk through the door. Right? You pick all of them? <laughs> every third person. Every, every so third person. So what I can do, let's say I need 50 people for my sample, what I can do is I can ask every five people that comes out of the door. That's what I said. I don't know if that's what you said. I said every third person that walks through the door. You ask oh, I didn't know. All right. I'm just stupid then. Next, large sample size. The larger the sample size, what would happen to the, the sample error? The lower the margin of error. The lower the margin of error or the sample error would be. Oh my gosh. It's like the, the, lower, the, the lower the sampling error would be, the lower that percentage would be. And that's what we want, a low sampling error. It just makes sense. Like, for example, let's say I want to know how many Rose students hate Ms. Kaufman. And there's two polls. One that asks 50 students and one that asks 500 students. Which one would you trust more? 500. 500. Because it's going to be closer to the truth. It's going to be closer to the population. All right. Another one would be unbiased question. This is, pollsters spend a lot of time thinking about the questions they're going to ask because it's important to ask a question that doesn't lead the responder one way or another. So I gave you an example of this. Do you support that woman should You're going to ask the abortion question as, do you support a woman's right to choose to terminate her pregnancy or do you support the women, that women should be able to kill their babies? I think the second one's unbiased. Right. Just which one would lead responders one way? The second, the second one. It would lead them to answer what? No. Yes. No. no. It would lead <laughs> them to answer no. <laughs> this is bias. Which is a biased question. And what happens to your results? Are they reliable? They're skewed. Skewed. They're going to be skewed. Exactly. Questions in a poll survey should not lead the responder to, re to one response or another. You need to make sure that your question is neutral so that you can have accurate